for the report. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> I am at a loss. And okay. then your last name, it's Friedland. Is that how you say it? Friedland. Okay, yeah. Okay. Friedland. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Yep. No, I, what you, you say, know, Matt? I, Matt. Hey, yep. Matt? Matt, Matt and Tom. I'm Matt, and that's my buddy Tom. Tom. And we Was we that are the short of Matthew. It is. It okay. is. So, uh, all right. So let me just uh, do a quick welcome, and then we'll we'll just start drilling you with questions, and we'll just kind of go with the flow. Hold it. And I do this just because if there's anybody in the Connecticut area or the tri-state area who uh, might be around uh, July 10th, around Ansonia, Connecticut, I'll be in the Fab Four Festival. The Fab Four okay. Festival. Yeah, that's right. I'll be opening for the uh, headliner. You know, they're all Beatle tribute bands. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just to, to start off this uh, recording on a uh, flying note, I if I may, just play for you uh this uh a i have to hit connect continue there we go i'd like to just play for you if i may just for a brief while here just to bring some class I'm not saying that your show is not classic some <laughs> class to the internet he listens. A, new, a new song which i have you know i'm a singer songwriter right oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah cool cool a new song i have composed and i call it Sonata in E flat minor for eyebrows. Thank you. <laughs> Sonata in E flat minor for eyebrows. Here we go. There you go. That's all. <laughs> little, little thing to get the show started. That was amazing. <laughs> Yes, yeah. all exclusive. <laughs> Thank you for classing it up for us tonight. Yeah, Thomas Henry says amazing, amazing. Yeah, you can put that on a on a CD, on a T-shirt. You know, it's all yours. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, so since you mentioned it, before we get to the Ghostbuster stuff, that that really yeah. is a small part of your overall career. I, I'm really excited about your musical background as brute force. And so um, can you, what, what brute force, what is that? What is that name? How did you come up with it? Um, what's the story there? Thanks, Matt. Uh, uh, back in uh, 63 and 64, I teamed up with the tokens uh, via, you know, different connections in the music business. I, I eventually became a member of the Tokens, songwriter in their office, member of the group, writing songs, etc. cetera. And uh, when, when they were very delighted with me as an individual and as a talent, and I wrote a lot of funny songs, you know, and uh, also, serious and love songs and you know they came around i was being recorded also by them as an individual as an individual so i figured uh, with them mm -hmm. that stephen friedland it was not the proper name for me as a rock star if i were to become if I were to become a rock star, Stephen Friedland, how mistaken I was really. Uh, the whole picture would have changed dramatically had I had my music put out as Stephen Friedland in that uh, when I recorded at Columbia, my album on Columbia in 67, some three years past, the moment that I'm speaking about. Had I stayed with Stephen Friedland, it would have been much, there would have been much more respect, 
I would have been shown so much more respect as an individual. As at the, my identity would have been respected. As brute force, my identity truly was never respected. The, the promotional material that they put out from Columbia on me was meaningless, had nothing to do with me. They wrote complete fictions about me. Imagine sending it out to thousands of people, stations, writers, brute force comes from Minneapolis, you know, nothing to do with me at all. So flashback to when brute force was discovered, I, I was, they were recording me and some of my funny songs. We were doing a song called The Fall. You put your right foot behind your left foot. You put your left foot behind your right foot. And if you notice what you're doing, you're walking backwards. You're walking backwards. And it's the fall. And it's a dance song. And you fall over. And it's the fall. So, so, I, so I said, I came up with this name, Crude Brute. Crude Brute, which was perfect example of where my mind was at at that time. And uh, Jay Siegel, the leader, the, that guy <laughs> from uh, Wimoway, he uh, said, he said, brute force. He yelled at brute force. And that's the beginning of brute force and stuff. But I trademarked it for me as, as the trip, my trademark. Actually, oh, I just found my uh, HSBC card. How great. And I called him up yesterday and reported it lost. <laughs> oh. No, really, because I couldn't find. I looked all over, but I didn't look in the in the. That's all right. They're sending me a new car. <laughs> so, oh, and lion. As a matter of fact, the, the the logo on here is a lion. Very interesting. That we're speaking about. Lion yeah. sleeps tonight. You know, if you, I don't know if you see lion. No, I don't want to do that. The number. Of, <laughs> so, a bunch so, of so anyway fiber merchandise brute purchase brute force was born and you know i toured with them and i wrote songs for their com for their publishing company got songs with bernadette peters you know uh del shannon other people and they recorded me. They did a, a, an album called Extemporaneous, which is a very innovative for that time, very innovative album for that time because it was all extemporaneous. And it was done in a studio. And uh, there were 40 people in the studio, Olmsted, Olmsted Recording Studios in New York City. And uh, it's so pretty. The cover is so pretty. Yeah. If you've ever seen that, oh, yeah. extemporaneous mm -hmm. brute force, and that's a grand piano there, and that's the reflection off of my. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. See, that's what that's what that is, and so and there's the Columbia album. You know, I did a Columbia brute force confections of love, high brute force confections of love. I'm I'm interested in in getting back with. Uh, well, see, this was a CD. I think this, yeah, this is the CD. No CDs at that time. This is the CD. Uh, it was vinyl, you know, uh, a CD, which is a uh, bar none, independent company, bar none, uh, really reissue. I, I think in 2010 or was it? Uh, well, I'm trying to get back to them, see if they'll do that again. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just <laughs> for all the so kids I, listening. A CD, you would place it inside of this CD player, and there would be music on this round holographic disc for, for all the young people listening. A CD, compact disc. Yeah. <laughs> digitized, digitized music on a, on a disc. That's right. And. Uh, Oh, there are young people today that don't know what that is, right? Unfortunately. Well, uh, yeah. But we found you on Spotify. See, look, look how pretty that is. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's so pretty. You can see the spectrum. You can see. Oh. 
And uh, well, this actually is a DVD. This is a DVD of a hilarious thing. Did it on the beach with daughter, of course, um, called Lars Linguist, Bless Her of Bait. That is a hilarious five minutes. I play Lars Linguist and my uh, lifelong friend, God bless his soul, he has passed on. He plays Olaf. Uh, he comes to me on the beach. He's a fisherman to have his bait blessed because that's my thing. I bless the bait and people. But the point is to bless the bait so that the fish will be attracted to it. So that the fisherman will catch the fish, bring it home and feed his hungry family. So that's the deal with uh, that. And uh, I never, that's my landline. Um, so yeah, that, well, that's a CD. I'm surprised you say that about people. I thought young people to know they, well, what uh, medium in music today? Oh, to, it's just uh, the, the, the smartphone, smartphone, right? Yeah, exactly. Or we, they have gone backwards and they're in the vinyls again. They're that's in the right. records. There is an uptick. There sure is an uptick. As a matter of fact, Ace in London, you may know, Ace has, has, may know you may know that ace in london which is the packager of uh, art of artists and music from different eras eras they have released this uh, on Brute Force, you know, uh, which was the Apple two tracks, Nobody Knows and King of Pa. Only they made Nobody Knows, very pretty uh, sleeve. Oh, they made absolutely. Nobody Knows the A side and they made King of Pa the B side. It's very pretty sleeve. I'm very delighted with that. People are buying it. As a matter of fact, uh, they, I believe they're going through a reprinting, a second printing. Which is very good. Which is awesome. Very good. awesome. Yeah, right. Uh, Ace, and so people buy this for me. I from me. I sign the label. I send them a autograph picture, and uh, also give them a free copy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being so commercial. <laughs> no, this is good. I'm not sorry, actually. I give them a free free copy of. Because this is the real, this is the, this is the emes. You know the word emes? It's truth in That's like true. Hebrew. I give him the, a free copy of C, of Brute Force Planet Work. See that? Planet Work. Planet Work uh, is a 16-minute uh, thematic program uh, of pledging allegiance to the planet, planetary nationality. And all the songs on here are towards that end. All the songs on here are towards that end. And uh, so, so, so there you go. That was the, that was the uh, lurch for merch hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I'll be I'll be having a little, there'll be a merch table too at the July 10th the Fab Four Music Festival in Ansonia. People, I'm, I'll be doing that with Daughter of Force. Uh, fell out there very very an, a really a, kind of an impresario in this uh, world. Uh, so by the name of Charles Rosenay. He uh, produces it and he presents I think ten Beatle tribute bands. Imagine. Hmm. And he wants me to do King of Fa, which I will do. Now, obviously, that connection, you know, with the Fab Four Festival is is derived from the John Lennon, George Harrison connection to the King of Fa. Absolutely. So, George Harrison, John Lennon, very bravely put it on Apple Records. A thousand copies. And um, it, it remains the rarest single ever on Apple Records. And uh, 
I have one of them. They, they send me two boxes. They sent me around 50, I believe, 20. <laughs> I have tried to find one with no I, Well, you pay right now. I think it's around between 3.5 and 4K for uh, US for one. But the John Lennon uh, single went for around 8,000. US. Wow. That's right. Yeah, they, uh, John Lennon and George Harrison were very, very kind to me and they put it on Apple Records. And it's been a blessing and it's been a curse in a way, you know, because I was immediately uh, censored by their distributor. So it couldn't be played. <laughs> it wouldn't be played. No one would play it. <laughs> but it was truly censored in a letter in the book the roof by ken mansfield they devote a whole he devotes a whole page to a letter from the president of capital records back in 68 69 69 and uh in the letter he just says he says, in effect, don't do it. Do not. I will. No, I will not. We will not distribute this. Uh, this record. So, you know, the other choices they have. Are, which is total absurdity. If, if you're into language, <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, you could do that with any word then. If in context it becomes something you don't like. Right. To prove a point, we should not say the word Ghostbusters for the rest of the show, just to illustrate to people what that what that's actually like. Word. No, no G words anymore. Canceled. 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 So, uh, you know, in your experiences with, with Apple Records and, and John, I'm a big Beatles fan, so I did you oh, have good. any... Did you have any interactions with John and George back then? Was it Well, you know, they, they called me when I was... Uh, just about to get married. I was with my fiance in our apartment in New York City and they called me and they spoke with me. Do you have a record? Hello, this is George Addison and John Lennon We're calling from London and you know you have a record on Apple. I said, okay, come on, who is this, you know? And uh, no, it's really them. And of course my mind is blown and I thanked them so much. I, I was stunned, really stunned. And they wrote, and George wrote me a letter. George Harrison wrote me a letter to that effect. You know, you have a lovely name and a great record on Apple called King of Fa. I love the nobody knows sign side also, also. And uh, I'll meet you when at another time. And uh, until then, George Harrison. I saw that for thirteen hundred and fifty dollars at a Beetle Fest. Uh, I don't know in ninety four, I think. Wow. wow. Uh, but the rest of my memorabilia, as brute force, is on. Uh, if anybody wants my King of Fa uh, for Apple Eight, and the and the letter from Mal Evans to me, and copies of the George Harrison letter, and Proofs of photos that uh, Linda Eastman took of me at Columbia. Uh, I have a memorabilia pack on eBay, I think. Yeah, eBay. It's a little overpriced, but then, you know, we're in a inflation now. That's right. It's it's a it's a, buy, a seller's market. So, you know, uh, that Beatles stuff goes for a lot. It's a seller's money. market now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Good, good. I was looking at one of your shirts. I, I like it a lot. Um, oh, who guy. is this fucking guy? Shirt? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, one. I just, uh, I just, I just ordered thirty of them. I hope they get here <laughs> in time for me to do this thing on the tenth yeah. uh, from a company. Uh, you know, and I tried to find out where they're being done. So I finally found out they're being done in Tijuana, Mexico. Printful company. Oh, that and is. 30 minutes away from me right now. So. Are you in San Diego? I am, yeah. 
So it's being transported to San Diego. And from San Diego, I pray to God it is being flown here, not driven by a truck. You would think that they fly it, right? It's USPS. Yeah. Probably. I, I to hope be so. Yeah, between the 2nd and the 8th, my shirts are supposed to get here. So I ordered small, medium, large, extra large, and two XL. Six of each. And well, it, was, it was a great feeling for me because the music that I've sold for the past year and a year and a half that have come in and the, and the, and the money that has come in via PayPal, I built up a little PayPal thing. So I paid it through PayPal with money from songs that I wrote, who knows when. It was, it was just, you know, like the wheel keeps turning. And I hope the economy keeps turning that way. I really hope this economy keeps turning that way so we don't find ourselves in like a 1929 situation. Yeah, well, if all I know is that if at the end of this performance, you have two extra larges left. I know, I know a couple guys who may be on this call right now who's going to want one. And, and so. it's, it's easy at brutesforce.com. Brutesforce.com is uh, the way it uh, the way the way it works. And uh, I was a uh, fire truck, I think. And uh, you know, I'm in New York City. It's quite it's quite the thing here these days. Yeah. Yeah. Now Portland's Portland's homicide rate has gone up over five hundred percent. Do you believe that? <laughs> I'm I, not me. I just these are the statistics that I read just today on TV. Wow. So, I'm over there. <laughs> so, I thought of right. California today, crime of Fornia. That's what I thought of. Crime of Fornia. <laughs> Sounds about right. Right. See, we have we have a we have a good here in Orlando. You're in Orlando. Yep. Great, great. I'm doing. I'm doing. I uh, hopefully I'll be doing some business down there uh, within the next with next year. Nothing to do with music at all. It's just. Uh, on the real estate side, so. Listen uh, to you, Mr. Mobile. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, 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 just uh, not at all. But Disney is there, isn't it? Disney is still there. Mm -hmm. Are they still there? Yep. Yep. Still there. Fully functioning. 100%. So no, it's been okay. good, but. <laughs> So t talk about, so you, you have this music career, you're hanging out with the Beatles and then you end up That's not... in Ghostbusters. 83. That was 83 though. How did, so how did we get there? Yeah. Right. Because 64, I'm joining the music. 68, 69. I'm getting the 67. 68, 69, I'm getting Columbia. My other BT puppy, Extemporaneous, and then 69, Apple. So 69, and then they wouldn't do it. And then I put out a couple of brute force records, King of Fu. <laughs> no one would play it. Sorry. A guy by the name of Jeff Sheen, he was with Petra Grammaton Records. He uh, expressed the interest in forming a record company with me and I uh, put out King of Fun. I also put out uh, Holy Night The stars are brightly shining It is the night of the dear symbol Bing! Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and air repining till he appeared and the soul felt its word. And then a, a bass uh, behind this, uh, only a bass, bass going very, very fast to the chords of a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices when yonder breaks a new and glorious morn and then a chorus comes in all on your knee 
Oh, hear the angel voices and drum. Oh, night. And then a guitarist who I don't know who it was dropped in on the section in the upper valley of the Oha of Ojai, California, where we were living. And so it's oh night, and this guy is going bam 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 night divine. Oh night when Christ was born. Oh night divine. Oh night, night divine. And I so I did that on it's one of my proud releases on. That's Christmas Carol. That's it's it right there. It's on. Christmas in July right now. I'm be, I'm like in that vibe right now. You got me in that mood. Oh, thank you. One of my proud releases on uh, Brute Force Records. Yeah, no, I mean, no, you're good. right. There's so many different people who do Oh Holy Night the same way. You came in and you brute forced it. Very, very different. Very different. Thank you. <laughs> I brute forced so, it. <laughs> <laughs> so in between releasing these records, uh, and I know you got into stand-up, too, at some point, right? D did you do that before Ghostbusters, or is this probably after? Probably that was the first, Matt, uh, because in high school, I was entertaining at parties. I would sit down at a piano, and I would say, give me any subject, and I'll write your song. And they would do that. And so, and that part of, of, of a set, I would carry all the way through an extemporaneous set. I'd make up a song based on any topic or idea, which is good because, you know, if they're good, then it, it's good. If they're not good, well, you have to have a few lines like, oh, that sucked, you know. And uh, but if the songs are good, it, it can last another good 10 minute chunk of time in a set. So but comedy uh, got serious in 1980 because I said to myself, You've got to have an act. You've got to have an act. I was going to showcase clubs. I was going every night and I was trying out new things. I was, I was a musical comedian. I was an off the wall act. I was not a traditional stand up at all, nor am I now a traditional stand up. And uh, you, can, you can look up, you know, uh, well, as I opened your show with the uh, sonata in E flat minor for eyebrows, that's the a good good indication of what I will do. What I do do is comedy, and but I I wrote I write jokes and I do say jokes, but and then I have props, props, letter props, um, cardboard letter props, which I make words from uh from like a i will put a in front of me stand on a seat if i could still do that now <laughs> stand up on a seat and hump the a and go fucking a right right and then b you know b b it can be a p p and can be a d also an M, you know, M can be a W and it can also be an E. So that could spell mew, mew if you spin it around. Mew, mew, mew. So I do that too. And and then then I got an hour and a half easy of songs. I say that easy, but I, it depends on, on the rehearsal and how much, and how much I have rehearsed. I, I do a lot of my performing now with Daughter of Force. She helps me greatly in uh, sorting out uh, what lead sheets I'll be looking for next if I need a lead sheet to remind me of the lyrics or to remind her of the lyrics. And uh, so, and then on the 31st, there's a uh, guy's birthday up in uh, Woodridge, Connecticut, to Bobby, Bobby Daprile. He uh, he has a birthday party coming up. Outside concert, an outside concert. 
So uh, 1983 rolls around. You're 20 years deep into your career. How do you, how does Ghostbusters happen? How does that, how does Brute Force end up in that? Oh, you asked me that 15 minutes ago. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Right. Uh, well, then I started describing the years, the records, and the emergence of comedy. And then so, and so in the meantime, though, in 1967, I had gotten into American Federation of Television Radio Artists, from which I got into SAG, Screen Actors Guild. And so and they have merged within the last five years, I think. And so, because uh, I acted, I always have acted, and I loved hanging out at the dramatics departments of all the schools, colleges I've been to. And uh, so I went out for roles in films. Now, one of these films I went to, my hair, I was, I was all bald. I was not wearing my hair like this at all. I, you know, it was more, my hair was shaved, you know. I didn't have a beard at all. I was 83. I must have been 43 years old. And uh, I went to a direct, uh, casting director's office. And this young woman said to me, oh, I know what you're good for. Uh, she said the Hare Krishna. I think she said the Hare Krishna. And so that's what happened. It was great. It was great because I had, the, I was distinctive out of all of those people. I was distinct and I was put in, the, I was set in a distinct place during that particular scene. They made it look like it, I was staying on top of a car, but I was on a platform and so that was just after the marshmallow man had been destroyed. So I picked up some of the studs and I put it on my head. And I said to the Reitman, I said to, I said to Mr. Reitman, whether I said Mr. Reitman or Ivan, I don't know. I said, how about this? And he said, yeah, 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 do it. And that was great. So that, that got the suds on my head and I'm on there and I'm just bopping along doing that, you know, doing that. And, and that's what was happening there. And uh, so that's how that initial casting and there were two days of shooting. I was wearing very thin clothes, very thin yoga clothes and it was freezing out. <laughs> it was freezing out really and uh, it's great though it was really great and you know I was right close I was close to that because yeah and then once I was standing in front and back of Reitman we were in front of a church there uh, one of the pictures that you may have I don't know we probably have them all I, you gave a hell of a performance because for the last 35 years of my life or so, I honestly thought, like, it never had occurred to me until I, I learned the name Brute Force. I thought that that, that was an actual Hare Krishna oh, thank individual you. dancing. You know, I, I thought they just picked that person up as an extra, you know, um, how extras do, you know. Uh, so the fact that you were cast for that because you had that look and that and that, that wasn't actually your uh, daily persona, that's very that's really impressive. Well, just to show you, there is a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Krishna is uh, very important in that book for Arjuna. This, this fellow was fighting, you know, and he didn't he didn't have the guts to kill his his uh, relatives. He would have had to kill his relatives. And he complained to Krishna, he said, how can I do this? How can I unloose my arrows into my people I know? Krishna says, well, the wise mourn neither for the living nor the dead. And 
it's better to go on fighting. Better to go on fighting. That's just one part of it. That's kind of the beginning. Uh, so, but it's very interesting that you thought I was a real Hare Krishna. That's great. Well, they put that white streak on me, you know, yeah. in makeup. Yeah. They put that white streak on me in makeup. I, every time I see Hare Krishnas, you know, doing their thing in the subway, Krishna, Hare Krishna, and they're down there, you know, maybe a dozen of them on the drums with the and with the harmonium behind them and they're doing their thing, you know, I, I, you know, I say hello, give them some money and they give me some, uh, they give me a couple of pamphlets always, you know. I always had a uh, fantasy that I would just go down and join them, you know, and just stay with them. But I, you know, it's not, I can't, I. My neighbor, my neighbor, uh, two apartments down is a Hare Krishna. And every time I see oh. him in his orange, his robes are orange. I'm like, oh. in my head, it doesn't work because I picture you as, as that <laughs> Hare Krishna. I'm like, they're supposed to be white. Like, why are they, or like, it doesn't, doesn't really connect. <laughs> see, and I, I thought the same thing. I, I, I didn't think that it was an actor. I thought you were the, the legit thing, but the, in that movie, just in the few minutes, we've got priests, we've got Jewish rabbis, right, we've got a Hare, right. Hare Krishna. I mean, we've got like all these different religions and faiths right. represented. And I just assumed that they just pulled in a couple of these guys last minute and threw them in there. I think everybody was an actor, you know, and I was hired, you know, as a background, see. Mm -hmm. uh, so. But it was two days of work, which is good. And, uh, but I didn't have things to say. You know, if I had some things to say, they would have given me a line in the credits, you know. But, right. but this fellow, you know, this, uh, this three photo thing from another Ghostbusters group over in London, in England, you may have, you may have seen that. Uh, he very nicely printed up a panel of the the Hare Krishna shot. The 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 label, the Apple label, and I think yeah, the who is this fucking guy shot. Uh, I, I may have sent that to you. And. Uh, So, but they didn't use me in any of the other ones. I, I, you know, I want, I would have liked to have been in different ones. I, in fact, I even went as far ahead in my mind as to think, well, should I send them, you know, a, uh, a premise for what to write? You know, some of the characters would come around and ask, ask advice for me, you know? <laughs> I'd be sitting on a corner or something like that. I would give out advice. But uh, still time. That's okay. I met Bill Murray once. He was coming out of a building. I was walking into a building. And uh, that way, so that was, that was pretty good. Uh, I've, I've, met, I've met Bill Murray once, and it was more like that in passing type interaction as well. Ships in the night for sure. That's right. That's it. That's it. Did He's you... a very far out guy. Sure. So with Very the movie, cool. who loves music, he does. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, the movie uh, Groundhog's Day was really great. Very great. I think a great movie. It was. <laughs> so, like, after you shoot Ghostbusters, right? Uh, six, eight months later, it comes out. Yes. Did Did you have any? Did Ghostbusters impact you between uh, nineteen eighty four and and you know when people started asking you about it on the internet? Did, was it something that you thought about? Did it have any impact on your life? Did you mention it at like parties? You're like, I was in Ghostbusters, or was it just one of those things? Uh, well, I wouldn't say particularly. I, I think I, I must have struggled to get the, the moving image. 
you know, and I, I don't know how, just how I got a few of the photos. Uh, but there were no, there was not, not too much actually about it. Uh, no, <laughs> it, it just was another, it was another role. It was very good. I could something I can say, oh, did you see me in Ghostbusters? Oh yeah, right. And uh, I was very happy, always very proud to mention that. And um, uh, but on to on to the next, you know, on to the next battle battle between that and comedy and and music, you know. Always thinking that uh, shall I do this there? Shall I do this there? And uh, no, really, I just sent out a script uh, the other day, a a uh, play, a play, right, a play. Right, and uh, you know, with the live performance, it's the live performance with merch seems to be the best for revenue at the moment, you know. Yeah, yeah, until I can land, I suppose, a either a live screen movie or a play. Um, if, if Matt and I, I ever I, throw a Ghostbusters convention, if that ever happens, we'll invite you to perform at the convention. A brute force concert at a Ghostbusters convention would be. Uh, are you yep. doing? Are you doing group go, oh, Ghostbusters conventions? It's maybe someday. We've talked maybe, about we've it. Talked about it. Maybe someday. There have we've been. Got, Ghost, there have been Ghostbusters conventions. There was one, yeah, yep. uh, a few years ago for the thirty-fifth. I would be happy to actually. Yeah. Sure, I'm always open. That's. For that that would be cool that would, really that great. would be a lot of fun that would be a lot of fun that'd be a lot of fun hey, I, i'll, I'll wear my the, yoga, yoga you put the marshmallow back on your head that's all we have yep. we'll, we'll, we'll get you a marshmallow cat <laughs> did uh I, I i saw it so there's a show that i watch uh, yeah. with my wife and it said that i i saw that you were in it i don't recall where though so i love if it's true because you know there's only true things written on the internet um right were you were you in the show the marvelous mrs Maisel? oh sure yeah i was at a table and i played you know an uncle of the bride i think yeah um, i'll have to go back and watch it was at a table if i knew how to do that right now i would do it but i <laughs> i'm afraid i would lose this zoom show because i know it's in my uh, documents cache. And I could send it to you. Let me write it. Well, let me write that down then. And to send the Maisel's picture to you. Yeah. Yeah, I was booked in that. And I did that. And I, I haven't gotten back so quickly into movie movies because of the or TV series because of the because of COVID, you know. Yeah. And now they, who knows? It's not there, this Delta. <laughs> but I've been vaccinated. So are you guys been vaccinated? Yeah. Oh, good. We all have the antibodies. Yeah. Oh, terrific. Oh, if you have antibodies, does that mean that you had COVID? I did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'm thankful that you're still with us. Me too. <laughs> I, I had a pretty rough case. It was touch and go. I'm so glad you lived so you could do this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so happy that you lived yeah. that. Great, really. You know, uh, other than that, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting something done on my, um, my musical. I produced a musical about the King of... Uh, um, I can't believe how long ago it was. In, it was in 2006. And this is 21, that's 15 years ago, I produced a musical based on the beautiful land of fun. And I'm looking to turn that into a show for a, uh, a company, uh, a, um, for a radio show in England. Looking for that. And uh, uh, 
recording my music. I'm very much more excited about recording my music now than anything, really. As there are so many songs that I, I, I just want to put in an album. I want to make another vinyl album, you know? I'd like to do that, and I can do that. So while I'm still here, you know, I might as well do that. It's a good idea, but I'm still here to do that. Unsolicited <laughs> pitch. How about a uh, brute force version of the Ghostbusters theme song? See, release it as like a single or something. That would be make, make, an interesting uh, concept, actually. Make the fans go crazy. Uh, that, that would be a combination, and I will think about it. Thank you, Tom. I will I, think about that. I just selfishly want to hear it myself. So, yeah, that was a highly produced uh, track too. You know, so. yeah, you'd and have your work cut out for you. The eyebrow version, but you could do it. I would like the eyebrow yeah. version of the theme. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there are there are lots of songs uh, that I have, which uh, which for me mean a lot. Just really mean a lot. And uh, uh, mean that I want to put down so so people can hear it. People can hear brute force songs. I'm sure that my fans, which are all around the world now, I'm sure that they are saying to themselves, "Well, you know, where's the new music?" You know. this so anyway this is uh, and i'll only do one verse because uh, this is uh, definitely uh you know copyright there's a i want to do a, more than one song of mine as a country artist i i loved country western music country music when i was a young boy so anyway <clears throat> Big ship sailing in the morning, destiny unknown. I'll be on that ship in the morning, and I'll be far, far gone. Destiny unknown, destiny unknown. If they ask for me, just tell them that I've gone. I'll be sailing for the horizon and the morning sun. Please don't ask me where I'm going. Destiny unknown. Destiny unknown. Destiny unknown. I'd give you my, my address, but I just don't know. Helmsman, as he plows out to sea, leading behind all his loved ones, just left with memory. Destiny unknown, destiny unknown. About the time you figure it all out, about the time to go. The 
There's a big ship sailing in the morning. Destiny unknown. I'll be on that ship in the morning. Destiny unknown. Destiny unknown. That was great. Well, I'm telling you. I well, want that song. I, I, I love that song. That was great. I didn't think I didn't think we'd be getting the concert tonight. I'm loving well, this. Well, what's up? Appreciate it. That was really, really good. Okay. Bravo, sir. I like that. It's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, I like that song. It's an old song, too. I, you know, wrote it a while ago. Right. So, but look, don't you see? It's going to go on for hours. Oh, geez, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm surrounded with my files. I'm surrounded with my music. And uh, I'm, I'm tasked. I am tasked with the uh, um, reality of continuing my promotion, of doing as much publicity as I can. I do have a very good friend now who is helping with me with publicity. It's like an ad hoc thing, you know, and uh, fan fan publicity fan publicity someone who really believes in uh, in me and uh, is a great but is a great 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 john lennon fan see and uh as far as marketing goes i'm learning quite a lot since i've i've uh, bought uh I've, i bought some ace uh, 45s from the company in uh, london and uh, they you know it's it's like you know you become a business fan you have to you know they give you a break and then you gotta judge what am i what are you gonna what then what are you gonna sell it for and so and you gotta keep promoting that you know you want to keep promoting that and so uh, now you're into marketing yeah and you're into merchandising. And, and now I just ordered these shirts. I, <laughs> this day is going to come and they're going to be out there. And I think my grandson is going to be at the merch table. So I don't, I'm not too sure whether or not I want him to be singing King of Power with us. I, I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> cause any trouble. Well, the deal is he's nine. So I don't want to cause any problems at all with the, with the, promoter yeah I, yep. out of out of a hundred people one person will come up and complain and you know forget it that's yep yeah. that's it hey so <clears throat> we were, i was wondering you yeah. had mentioned that you sign your albums and stuff like that have you signed many ghostbusters things yet before no, no so this no, just just send me your stuff tell me now how how's that going to work you're going to send me stuff you can send me pens. I don't know what that means. Correct. <laughs> what do you think? Correct pens that felt tip pens or what? We're going to send you some Sharpies. We're going to send oh, you everything. It will make it super easy. And then I'll have return postage in there. And you can just send it back to us. But it's right. to me, like here's, so we're autograph collectors. But like I told you too, we're more than that. We love sharing these stories. We love hearing your story and hearing you perform form and, and being able to share this with fans because they just know you as the guy who's in the movie for a few moments granted it's very memorable and it's at the very end too good but shot. Like it's a good love, shot. yeah but we love sharing this stuff and so i'm excited too now that though that you'll be signing the first ghostbusters photos for our group <laughs> i said i well that's wonderful i just follow right along whatever you want to me, I look at it as a joy to be involved with something that which I was able to just do through my own through, the, through my own talents and uh, anything I can help, just let me know. And it's gone. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, pre I appreciate. It. Thank you. Love it. Let me know when. Let me know. Are you gonna internet this or what? Or is it just for your people? 
It'll be up on iTunes, uh, Spotify, YouTube, all that jazz. Yep. Beautiful. It'll be yeah. everywhere. Yep. Well, happy editing. Uh, I will be very <laughs> happy to see it and uh, promote it. Yeah. Sounds oh, good. great. Now I have another thing to promote. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So take care. Have a good evening. All right. You too. All right. Take thanks, care. my friend. Take care. Okay, Tom. Okay, Matt.